Hi everybody, this is Craig Tanner for the Mindful Eye and the Photo of the Week on the Daily Critique. Twice a month now, uh, the Photo of the Week is featuring images that have been submitted for the Mindful Eye's assignments in our community forum, and this is one of those weeks. This image was created and submitted by Janet, who is an intermediate photographer from Arkansas, and uh, Janet created this image for the Mindful Eye's assignment number six, which was called the assignment. The idea here was to uh, get an assignment from another person. Go up to somebody else and, and ask them for a photo assignment. Create the image and then let us know what the assignment was. Janet did a two-for-one deal here. She took her camera club assignment for the month, which was Lonely People, and took that on as our assignment number six, the assignment, and created this uh, stunning portrait of this gentleman whose name is Chester. And I'll give you a little bit more backstory in just a second about uh, how Janet met Chester. She shot this with a Canon 40D, effective focal length of 130 millimeters, and uh, at ISO 100, used a working aperture of f/5.6, and 1 1 25th of a second was the shutter speed. Um, Janet says that she was uh, driving down the road one day, and I'm really assuming that this is somewhere that's uh, on her sort of normal route of travel around where she lives. And she saw this gentleman feeding animals near the side of the road thought he was interesting, pulled over, stopped the car, met him, and photographed him, and has gotten to know him more since then. So this is really sort of one image in a series of images um, of Chester. And I want to go ahead and say something about that right away before we talk about the picture. Um, I, I love that part of the story. How many times are we driving along and we see something like that, and our intuition says, hey, I should stop, but we keep going. And how many times do we keep going because we make up a story about that scenario that's fear-based and so we keep driving to protect ourselves from uh, a future that is a story based on fear and uh, you know fear can keep us from you know jumping off of the cliff uh, but for the most part what fear does is it just sets limits um, that should be tested um, and I just really encourage you to look at this picture and it's a stunning portrait and to, to, when you see this, you might even want to print it out and put it up somewhere and put a caption uh, next to it. I know when I look at this, I just think of, of the word stop. When your intuition speaks to you, pull over. It may be a metaphor for just pulling over in your mind. It may be in the car. It may be walking through a city and you, and you see someone and you'd like to photograph them and there's something. And maybe you need to ask permission or whatever just really encourage you to let this image and the gesture and the expression in Chester's face here inspire you to honor your intuition and uh, your joy as a photographer. So, so I love that part of the story. And the other thing, I just jump forward a little bit and, uh, and say that, you know, another fear that a lot of photographers have are just fears connected to perfectionism. And one of the reasons that we gave this assignment was to drive the point home uh, that if you're having a hard time shooting for yourself because of perfectionism or worried um, about the outcome, um, it can really help to get outside of yourself and to let somebody else, particularly somebody that you'd really like to be a photographer for, give you an assignment. It can be really uh, very, very energizing. And you know who those people are in your life, or maybe it's just a stranger. Maybe it's somebody uh, that you meet that uh, does some small kindness for you on a trip. And, and you say, you know what, one more thing before, before I go, um, I'd like to take a picture for you and email it to you. You know, what would you like me to photograph? It can be a very great way to get out of our own uh, sort of petty fears and being very self-centered. And, uh, you know, we get to choose who we take the pictures for. And that was a, sort of a big part of this assignment. In Janet's case, it's uh, for the camera club, which is uh, really cool. Um, I can't even explain the effect this image has on me. Um, I know that a lot of it has to do with uh, the incredible expression here. Um, one of the things that really has a huge effect on us when we meet people is body language. And, and one uh, bit of body language that has a huge effect on us is what's happening with the muscles around the eyes. And uh, when people smile, uh, it's something that cannot be faked. You can't fake it. There has to be something going on inside of your mind that uh, is peaceful or happy or makes you feel truly content. And uh, it, the thing about this image is that um, Chester looks like somebody right away who spends most of his time outside. 
that in and of itself is extraordinary anymore. I think the average American spends four hours a week outside. The rest of the time we're in an enclosure. I know when I do a lot of street photography and I meet people that live outside, just that physical quality about them is extraordinary. And you see that here in Chester's face. When you combine the character in his face from spending a lot of time outside and sort of the weathering that's happened here with this expression, you get such a powerful sense of feeling from the eyes in this portrait. When you combine that with um, Janet's treatment, the, the enormous amount of depth, this just seems so three-dimensional. No background, the black back here. So we're just, this is really all we're going to consider in terms of telling ourselves a story. And uh, then you combine looking up and looking away, which starts to suggest remembering or nostalgia. There are just so many feelings that potentially can come from looking at this that have a powerful and very positive effect on the viewer. And uh, there's a couple of other things that I'll mention because we want to look at one more picture. Um, one is uh, the hat here and just how much that adds to the story. Uh, Chester already looks like this sort of character from another era that is, you know, some prospector or somebody who does uh, live outside or is connected to the land. And this hat is, um, you know, the, the prospectors are sort of Yukon, Alaskan hat. And not only does the hat, because of what it suggests in terms of a character and a story, not only is that powerful, but just from quality of line and the way it sort of continues this real powerful feeling of the lower mask of Chester's face and then color really incredibly rich from a color standpoint. Um, you know, you've got Chester's face and all the depth and everything that's happening there, and then framing it, you've got rust and this real understated, very, very rich, uh, very, very deep, in the same way that black has a lot of depth, uh, this blue. And uh, you get the immediate complement up here in a very tertiary way, almost sort of a blue slightly going towards green and this rust, that's awesome. And then the blue down here to complement what's happening here. It's just a it's a truly stunning image. We'd love to hear more about Janet's treatment here. That's really powerful too. Just quickly, I'm uh, going to look at one more image. And this image was submitted by April, who's an intermediate photographer from Chicago. Um, neat story on the assignment here. April got this from her sister. And um, she says her sister wrote, so maybe she emailed her sister. Her sister says, hey, I remember when I was a child, I liked to spy through the windows of people's houses. So your assignment is to take a picture of either your or someone else's home that tells us something about who they are or what they do. So to just sort of create this story. And uh, April has done an amazing job of this here. This is April in the shot. Uh, this image was shot with an icon camera and a wide angle lens, and it's a five pano stitch. And um, April has put herself in three of these panels as a character in the story, I'm assuming, working on her photography. And um, there's just so many things about this. I could talk about this image for as long as I talked about Chester's image, but I'm trying to keep this under 10 minutes. So there are a couple of things that I'll mention here uh, that I really love. I love the quality of light. This is such a powerful quality of light for shooting in an architectural interior. Twilight, where the outside light is uh, balanced with the inside light. And even though um, the lighting uh, can be relatively balanced, um, you get this real powerful difference between warm and cool. And you get the same color complement we were just looking at in Chester's shot, blue and orange. Such a powerful complementary color pair. Beautiful framing here. I love formal symmetry and architectural shots. April lines right up on this uh, wall that divides these two rooms. And then as you go out from there, you see an enormous amount of weighted symmetry in the image and also in the way April's handled negative space at the top and the bottom of the image and the weight that's been given to this part of the ceiling relative to the symmetrical centering. Um, a lot of really cool details in here too relative to the light, this, this beautiful window light coming in and creating dimension here. Really powerful image and I would be remiss if I didn't mention uh, what a cinematic quality this image has in, in the framing um, and um, in the dramatic lighting and sort of everything being important to the shot. And uh, that goes to a style that's been done by a ton of people across time uh, in photography. Um, and more recently, this image reminds me of uh, the work of uh, Aaron Hobson and his Cinemascapes. Um, two stunning images. I want to say a big thank you to April, big thank you to Janet, a uh, big thank you to Chester for being a collaborator in this beautiful portrait. Big thank you to all of you for being here on the Mindful Eyes Photo of the Week on the Daily Critique. Hope everybody has a great weekend.